Well, hello everybody. It's Danny back from Deep South Homestead. Um, I'm over at the cabin today to shoot this video. Uh, I want to do a little bit more talking about uh, the organic gardening. Um, had lots of comments, emails, and different things. I thought I wanted to address a little bit more of it before we actually go on into creating anything. Uh, and guys, I, I do apologize. Our new editing program, we have some glitches in it, so uh, please bear with us as we work through that. Uh, but today, I want to I want to sit and talk a little bit more about the organic side of gardening. You know, here in America, we have the old adage, and, and you've probably heard this: "You are what you eat." And guys, there is that is so true. We are what we eat. Whatever we take into our bodies is how our bodies respond to our food that we take in and our health and all these type things. You know, you have to stop and look back at our ancestors, how rugged they were and they could, they could take the elements and stuff like that. And it seemed like they were just like oblivious to, to disease and stuff like that that was happening. And today, everybody is, is frail and, and they've got heart conditions like me. I mean, I've got a heart condition now. And everybody, you know, has got a disease of this type or a disease of that type or this is wrong with you, that's wrong with you. We've had cancer, you know, you've had, you name it. We've had all kinds of problems. And it's because we are what we eat. And now I'll be the first to sit here and admit to you that when, you know, when I was younger, in my younger years, I ate anything I wanted to eat. It didn't make me any difference. I mean, I, I did eat good. I've always been on a farm. But I've eaten a lot of store-bought stuff. I didn't think anything about it. You know what I mean? I've used a lot of chemicals in, in, in the uh, growing process and things of this nature. Didn't think anything about it. It was just the way it was. I was raised that way. Uh, my dad used them. And, and it's not to, you know, and you think, well, the way I'm living doesn't affect me. You know what? <laughs> I said the same exact thing until I started getting old. When I started getting old, this old body started breaking down. Now, the only person I've ever seen that really didn't have an issue was my father. Now, my father, my mama, Lord bless her soul, but that man consumed some bacon and you know, salt pork. That's all, that, that's all he lived on was all that kind of stuff. Healthy as a horse till he died. You know what I mean? He just, uh, just, it was amazing to see how strong that guy was and how his body, but you know, not everybody's makeup is the same. I can eat the same thing you eat. It might kill me where you do fine with it. It all depends on how your body responds to what you eat. And plants are no different. We are what we eat. Um, and we have to understand if we, uh, you know, I'm not going to make this biblical or anything like that, but we were formed from the dust of the earth. So our bodies are made from soil. Our bodies are fed from soil. When our bodies pass on, they go back to soil. So soil is a vital, vital part um, of our existence today. And we've got to really grasp that concept it's something that, you know, me and my older age, I'm really trying to get a handle on. Now, I've always been a pretty decent gardener, and I've always tried to do things as, as organically as I could, and I've, I've studied nature to all extents, because I've been, I spent like 11 years in the woods, and guys, I, I learned so much about nature then, it's just that I didn't connect the dots until now. And, I'm, and I, well, I've started connecting them years ago, but I mean, it's not until now that I've actually uh, um, began to put it all into perspective like it needs to be put. Our health comes from the soil. And we have to understand that the health of the soil determines our health. Uh, our health comes from the water. If we've got poor quality water, then 
we've got poor quality health. If we're on a municipal water system, all right, we're going to have health problems because we're taking in chlorine, we're taking in fluoride, we're taking in, now they're talking about uh, the, uh, putting more chemicals in there. I, I can't use the words on these videos because they'll, they have to do with the, you know what here. Um, well, I just go ahead and say it. Hey, you know, I've got subscribers that tell me in their locations that they're putting graphene oxide in their water now. They're going to make sure they get this one way or the other. All we need is good, clean water with the minerals in it. Now, if we're filtering our water and taking everything out of it, we're still doing no good. We need mineralized water. I did some research here a few years ago when my former wife had cancer on the, on the country of Georgia and how those, some of those people were living to be 125 to 150 years old and they were drinking this glacial milk over there and making a tea from a blueberry leaf over there. And it was just like it, it prolonged their lives. But then the Western civilization type food system began to move in and, and now they don't live any longer than we do. But it just goes to prove that the mineralized water does make a huge difference. Um, you know, we come from the dirt. And we are soil. So are crops. Crops are made from the soil also. They're fed from the soil, just like we are. They come from the soil. They return to the soil, just like we do. So, in all essence, us and our crops, you could might make the connection that we are the same. So how we treat our crops and our food system is how we're treating ourselves. So if we're not creating good healthy food, we can't expect our bodies to be healthy. If we're going to a store and we're buying all of our food that is laced with all these chemicals, and they are, trust me, then we are damaging and destroying our bodies. And a lot of us, like me, it's just too late. It's, you know, I've, I've done so much damage over the years. All I can do now is try to do the best I can to remedy it, you know, and try to take care of it as best as I can. Because I made some foolish decisions throughout life. You know, sickness in our lives, I guess if you want to call it that, can be looked at through the same lens as plants. If plants don't get what they need and they become sick, then we become sick because we don't get what we need. If we go through our gardens and we're harvesting all this imperfect fruit that looks bad from plants that look diseased and all this kind of stuff, well, we're putting produce into our bodies that is diseased up already and does, really doesn't have the nutrition in it that it needs. It's been said that our forefathers or our great-grandparents, no further back than that, could raise vegetables in the garden and eat them, and we would have to eat up to 8 to 10 times as many vegetables as they ate in one meal to get the nutritional value that they got then. Because our soil is just so depleted today. And that is sad that we've brought ourselves to this point in life. Don't depend on experts out there to control or help you with your health. That's one thing I guess that it's the biggest issue. I, I just, I despise going to a doctor. Because I feel like when I go to a doctor, I'm just a guinea pig. So don't depend on the experts out there to, to take care of your health. Because trust me, they really don't care. They're out there for a dollar figure. That's what they're there for. It's a career for them. Because they chose that career because either mom and daddy told them to take this career or, you know, very few people actually do a career because they're just so in love with it. Most look at it from a dollar standpoint in the world today. And, and health care is no different than anything else. I mean, you know, people look at making lots of money. They go into the health care business, especially doctors and things of this nature, and people, other things like lawyers and the joke used to be in the construction company was plumbers because, you know, you had to pay a plumber so much money. But, guys, we've got to, I'm trying to make the connection between health of the plant 
and the health of our body because we are actually one. Illness has three main uh, things about it that are connections. One, stress. Two, bad food. And three, bad circulation. These are three things that destroy human health. And they're the things that we really don't even think about that much. You know, we think about, well, I'm not that stressed. Look, if you live today in the world that we live in, you're stressed. Because all that's going on around us, I mean, that's enough to stress anybody. If you just turn the news, I don't even listen to the news no more. I refuse to listen. To, I don't even turn the TV on. I ain't turned that TV on in years. I am not going to listen to it because of stress. One of the things with my heart condition, a doctor told me, he says, you've got to get rid of some stress in your life. He said, because of your condition, he said, you can't, I don't want you being happy. I don't want you being sad. I want you to find a place in your life where you're just on an even keel all the way across. And guys, when I started doing YouTube, you don't know how many comments that me and Wanda got. Said, so, y'all think y'all could make Danny laugh a little bit? Get a smile on his face? Guy, I was trying to follow the doctor's advice as much as I could. I mean, you never seen me laugh. You never seen me cry. I never had ups and downs, anything like that. I just was on an even keel across there. You know, and then you know, reading in the scriptures, I found laughter is a good medicine. And it releases certain hormones inside the body that actually is healing to the body. Now, it makes my heart go out of rhythm. I'm not going to lie. If I start laughing or get to carrying on, get too happy or get too excited, like if I'm doing one of these videos and, and I just get really into it and y'all go, man, keep on going, Danny. You know, I pay for it later because my heart goes out of rhythm and, and I have to, you know, I have to chill out for a while until it goes back, calms back down. I've wore my adrenal glands out as a young man living on the edge is what they called it. And because of that, my body produces too much adrenaline and it doesn't quit producing when I stop. It just keeps until I just, my heart can't stop it, in other words. It just keeps producing too much. So we've got to understand, in order to be able to correct these things, we've got to fix the plants to fix our health. And I'm using me as an example because it's really the only thing I truly know about to be accurate. Plants are the same. Bad circulation in the plants is attributed to bad fertilizer. And we have to just understand if we put the wrong fertilizer to our plants, then our plants are going to have bad circulation. Um, the bad fertilizer to a plant is the same thing as bad food to a plant. So bad fertilizer creates with a plant is like bad food to the plant and then bad food creates bad circulation in a plant. And if a plant's uh, makeup cannot circulate things through it like it needs to, then the plant is not healthy at all. Compost that comes from, let's just call it bad manure because technically they're, it, it scares me to death to even use manure now after, I, after what I've experienced here. But using bad manure, if you get manure from animals that's been given antibiotics, like horses and, you know, any animals that's been given antibiotics, antibiotics pass on through in the manure of the animal. Those antibiotics pass on into the soil if you use it in your garden and thus killing the microbes that's in the soil. If you use animal manure that, from animals that's eaten hay that's been sprayed with Grazon, and we have videos about that on our channel, uh, Remedy 2,4-D or any of these things like this, that stuff passes through that cow and it goes right on into the manure and you put that into your garden. Well, something like Grazon, Grazon is designed to stop the cell, cell structure build of a plant and actually kill it. And a lot of times it'll wait till that plant's up pretty good size and all of a sudden you go out there one day and it's just all wilted down and it's just dying. And that's caused from Grazon. These type manures actually poison the soil and it takes years to get this stuff out of the soil. So when you use an animal manures, we have to be very careful. And we talked about this in the last video, but we have to be very careful when we're using these animal manures because they will 
destroy the crops. Lots of people are feeding rabbits uh, alfalfa that's coming from, you know, that's genetically modified alfalfa because a lot of the alfalfa that's planted today is GMO alfalfa. And they plant, they give this stuff to their rabbits and then they turn around and use this stuff in their gardens and they they think they're getting a great boost and a great harvest from it, but actually you're actually poisoning your soil. So we've got to be really, really careful because I'm going to tell you, the powers to be are trying to destroy our ecosystem in every way possible out there, guys. How do we recover our health? Well, the first thing we've got to do is we've got to change our diet. And that's very difficult for a lot of people to do. Uh, I guess um, if I had to say that uh, the one thing out there that uh, that's the biggest fad or anything of that nature is dieting. What what we have to understand about dieting? Dieting changes the makeup in our body. It causes an imbalance in our body, and when we cause an imbalance in our body. What we do is we change the hormonal imbalance in our body. And when we change the hormonal imbalance in our body, it throws everything off kilter. So when I make the comment about changing our diet, I'm not talking about going on some diet fad, cutting carbs or doing this or doing that, you know. We have got to find a way to find a well-balanced diet. And the only way we're going to do that is to get healthy food from healthy plants that come from healthy soil. I've got to say this. Um, there's a big push out there now to get people to not eat meat. And guys, meat is a protein. The one way to fight the illness that we're facing in this country right now is to have a high protein diet. Now you can get high protein from beans and stuff like this, from a lots of vegetables that have high proteins in them, your dry beans and stuff like that especially, but you're not getting your B12s and all these kind of things that your body needs. And the powers to be, and I'm just throwing this in in the middle of this video here, the powers to be are trying to break our health down even more by taking the meat away from us and claiming that we don't need any more red meat, that we can get our protein from beans and stuff like this, which you can, but you're not getting your all of your, your nutrients, you're not getting your trace minerals, your B12s and stuff like that through all of this. So we've got to keep our health, we've got to find a, a happy medium, we've got to find a balanced diet. That's how we recover our health, is through a balanced diet. We need to drink enough water, like we talked about before, so that our urine becomes clear. And we need to exercise because the, the water and the exercise creates good circulation in our bodies. And if we eat the right foods, they get rid of the plaque in our arteries. And by getting rid of the plaque in our arteries, it makes us have better circulation, which means with better circulation, like we talked about in the beginning, is going to be one of the things that's going to help us increase our health as we age. Farming is exactly the same as fixing our own health. Fixing the health of the plants is exactly the same. The first thing we've got to do is we've got to fix the compacted layer of the soil. Because if the soil is compacted, then what we do is we have bad circulation for the plant because the plant cannot pull what it needs from the soil. It can't spread the root system out in order to grab what it needs and to be able to pull it into the plant so thus it's damaging the circulation of the plant. Now, the plant has got to have good circulation in order to be able to assimilate all of the minerals and nutrients out of the soil. And we also see that we've, uh, we've got to, uh, how do I the best to put this? We've got to stop using the wrong fertilizers. We've got to start, stop using harmful fertilizers. Because harmful fertilizers throw the soil out of balance. And when the soil is thrown out of balance, it's just like our diet being out of balance. Our bodies begin to create hormones 
and antibodies that causes us to have autoimmune diseases, the plant is no different. It begins to have its hormone balance. Plants have hormones just like we do. The hormone balance of the plant gets thrown out of whack, and when it does, the plant begins to have an immune problem also, and it makes it very susceptible to diseases and things to this nature. And the plant begins to be overtaken by disease because we've used the wrong fertilizer, we've got compacted soil, all these type things has taken place. Now this is one thing that I've learned. I don't show it a lot on my videos. I have some videos out there showing it, but I have a broad fork. And in our soil here, our, we have a sandy loom type soil. It has more sand than anything else, but it also has some clay up under it. This soil gets extremely hard. I mean, it's not as hard as clay, but it gets really hard where the roots can, and it dries out really fast because it's, it's got a lot of sand in it. And I have to take that broad fork and I have to stick it down there and have to kind of like break the plants back to open the soil up a little bit to let some oxygen down into those roots where the air can circulate down in there so that they can begin to pull up nutrients and stuff like that out of the soil again because there again we have bad circulation which is caused by soil compaction. Much like we fixed our own health through eating the right foods, we've now fixed the health of the plant because we've given it better fertilization and we've taken care of the soil compaction. If we can take care of these two things, it's the beginning of a healthy plant and thus we've solved a lot of our health problems with our plants. One of the other things I want to think about in our bodies is blood flow. You know the blood flows from your heart is your heart pumps. The blood flows through your body, they're telling me, about a thousand times a day. If you've got good circulation. And that's where optimal health comes from. It's good circulation. Plants are no different. Plants have got to have that same amount of circulation coming through the, through the plant. Just like the body. If we don't have enough water in our bodies and we become dehydrated, then our blood can't flow through our bodies as many times a day as it needs to get rid of the toxins out of our bodies or anything like that. Plants are much the same way. If that plant begins to suffer from a lack of moisture, that plant cannot circulate stuff through the plant like it needs to in order to be able to, for that plant to stay healthy and to stay hydrated. Uh, Wanda and I come over here on our place once a day. I've got some, I, I do a lot of container gardening. Um, I show some of it on, on, on Deep South, but we've got these tubs out here that have, I have four pepper plants. These four pepper plants right here have almost provided a freezer full of peppers for Wanda and I this year. Not to mention what we've all ate and what we've <laughs> what we've put up in stuff. I mean, we made relishes. I'm talking about all kinds. It's amazing what these four plants have provided for us. But the only way that they provide for us that well is I took dirt out of the or soil. I'm sorry for using that word, dirt. Uh, I took soil out of the woods from a trash pile. So Y'all go back and watch our videos. We have videos talking about how we make our dirt. Uh, and I take that soil from the woods where we let trash piles rot. We don't burn our trash piles. We let them rot down and decay. And how I took the bucket and scooped it up and brought it over here. And I put it in these tubs along with a lot of leaf mold and stuff like that. And I check the pH of it. If the pH is wrong... I do use some calcium in it. I will say that I've used, I use some limestone. I say, when I say calcium, I'm talking about limestone in them to bring the pH up because I don't care how much fertilizer you put around anything. If you're using organic fertilizer, if that pH is not right, that plant is not going to do well. And most of my soil here ends up being about a 5.5 to a 5.8 pH without limestone because this ground is poor here. So a lot of people says, oh, you need to add eggshells. Well, eggshells is great in compost. Eggshells around plants. Now, y'all may, probably, somebody's going to jump me for this, I know, but I'm telling you, I know this from fact because I've tested it. Eggshells put around plants for the first year does absolutely nothing. It takes about two years for eggshells breaking down into the soil in order for it to have the right amount of uh, pH from that calcium 
that it needs. It's a very slow released calcium and we have to understand it. Even limestone. When I put limestone in here, it takes about three months just for limestone to work. Now you can use other products to get your pH up for quick use like us. We fill these pots up with that soil from the trash piles. Uh, we didn't add anything. I mean, they were full of earthworms. And I mean, just pieces of rotted wood, which we get our phosphorus from and all that kind of stuff. I put it in these tubs. We put them plants down in there. Well, after I mixed the lime in it and got the pH right, we put them plants down in there. And guys, we water them every day. Because another thing about gardening and farming is strategically placing plants where they need to go in the ecosystem. Now, these, these pepper plants call for full sun. The kind of sun we're having today, the sun is just too intense. These peppers get sunlight from sunrise till about 1 o'clock. And then from 1 o'clock to dark, they're in the shade. I have learned that in order to keep the circulation going in these plants, as soon as they come out of the sun, and they've been in the shade for about two hours, I water them. Because they've had time, the soil's had time to cool off enough by then. I water them, not out of the well. I have a, I have a tub sitting right there beside them. It's the same kind of tub they're in. I have the water in that tub. That water is the same temperature as the soil in that tub is, so I'm not shocking the roots. I'm putting water that's the same temperature around those plants. And those plants, after being in that hot sun all day and they've had an hour or two to cool off, they just begin to suck that water up and the circulation in the plant begins to pull the nutrition out of the soil and thus creating a healthy plant. We've had absolutely zero problems with these plants right here. And they are loaded. I mean, loaded all the time. Lots of people ask about, you know, about health issues. I'm learning if you change your water, if you change your food, and if you change your mindset, your body will begin to heal itself. Plants are basically just like that. What you put into the soil determines the cell structure of those plants. The type of water you put around those plants determines the type of circulation those plants are going to have. Health in the human body, health in plants is not a coincidence. It doesn't just happen. It takes a balance of everything in order for the plants and for our bodies to remain healthy. Now I'm going to mention another passage in the Bible. The scripture says the Lord ate butter and honey so that he would know to refuse the good to re refuse the evil and choose the good. Now that was a long time there. I couldn't figure that out. Until an old pastor sat down one time and he was talking to me. And I asked him about that and I said, Sir, could you enlighten me on this a little bit? I said, Butter and honey to know to choose the good and refuse the evil? I said, I'm not, I'm not grasping that. And he began to sit back and laugh. And he said, Yeah. He said, Son, he said, that's one. He said, In the society that you live in today, he said, I grew up in a different society because he was an older gentleman. He said, let me enlighten you on a little bit of things. He said, the society we live in today are gluttons. He said, to prove that, we have all-you-can-eat buffets. He said, all-you-can-eat? He said, come on, let's get real. The body only needs so much food to be sustainable. He said, but people will just glutton themselves out because it's all-you-can-eat for this price. They feel like they're getting a deal and they just stuff their bodies. And when he began to tell me that, he said, now, the reason he said that about the butter and the honey, he said, butter in moderation is very healthy for the body. But overindulging in butter will make you sick. Honey in moderation is great for the body. It's very healing for the body. But too much honey will make you sick. He said, so therefore, everything in moderation. And he said, food is why they, the Lord used food as an example, because it, it will 
heal your body or it will make you sick. And I thought that was very profound coming from, uh, from the Bible. And that's exactly true. The same thing happens with plant life. If, if that plant life is not healthy, we're not going to be healthy. If I eat too, I like peppers. If I eat too many peppers, I'm going to be sick. But if I eat the right amount of peppers, they're going to give me the vitamins that those peppers have for my body in order for my body to be healthy and to be strong. If I don't go out there and I don't cook them to death before I eat them. We have to understand that eating plants in their raw form is actually more healthy for us than it is to cook them. That's why, therefore, a lot of these uh, uh, juicers and stuff like that, people drink, make their own energy drinks and stuff like that from vegetables and things. Hey, I'm all for that. I think that that is a great way. Uh, your body doesn't have to break that stuff down into the cells and your body doesn't have to break it down to get the nutrients from it because you've broken it down and you're putting it in, in a liquid form. It's very healthy for you. Now, there are some diets out there, and I'm using the word diet again, that can be healthy, but they can't be your only form of life as far as eating is concerned. We have to understand that water, like we're talking about putting around these plants, water is the starting point of all health. Because the body, uh, I'm trying to remember the percentage in the body. Uh, I want to say the body is like 70% water. I think the organs are like 90%. But I think the body is like 70% water. And plants are a little different. Plants are like 95% water. So water is a huge factor when it comes to doing this type of stuff as far as gardening and organically and doing it the way nature intends for it to be done. That's why it is so important for the ground not to be bare around the plants, but to be covered with something so that the, the, the soil doesn't dry out and the water doesn't evaporate from around the roots because a lot of the roots are right on the surface. And when that happens, the plant can't circulate like it needs to. You know, purified water, if given to fish, and trying to make a fish live in purified water, he will die. Because it doesn't have everything in it that the fish needs in order to survive. And when I say that, I'm talking about things like um, distilled water. It's actually void of anything. It's just water. You put a fish in that and try to make him live and he'll die. That should be a lesson for us as humans. If we're putting water into our bodies or around our plants that have absolutely nothing in it, then how do we expect them to live and to provide healthy food for us to put into our bodies in order to maintain our health if we're putting water around our plants that are void of all nutrition? Guys, I wanted to do this video today because to me, before we go into actually producing fertilizers and, and uh, uh, insect control stuff and things this on our plants, we've got to understand the soil and its connection with our bodies before we before there's any need to even go into talking about how we make fertilizers to feed our plants with. Now, I gave you a little bit of a fertilizer tip today, a little bit of a water tip and stuff like that. But in the videos to come in the future, hopefully I'm going to be able to actually show you some things that, we'll, uh, that we're beginning to implement here in our high tunnels. Now, if y'all seen our high tunnels, they're like <laughs> plants on steroids, you know. Uh, as a matter of fact, when Cuz was here, I laughed at him so much, he pulled up my, my blackberries, and they were big as, some of them big as 50 cent pieces, and he's like, oh my gosh, this is like Planet of the Apes, you know, and I, I couldn't help but laugh. But guys, that's the truth. When we put in there what those plants need, we're going to get the results back, and it's going to be astounding as to how well things can produce and how well they will do. 
If y'all watched our video this year of the peaches that we picked off of our tree down here, I didn't do anything to that peach tree. I cut, I, I cut grass around it. I piled grass clippings around it. Um, I didn't really do anything to it. I didn't spray it. I just, I didn't, I pruned it a little bit in the spring. But guys, it, y'all saw the peaches on the tree in the videos. It produced abundantly. There were no worms in them. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. I tried that this year. This process that I'm talking about, I kept, we had an exceptionally wet year. Plenty of water was kept to it from the rain. And guys, I couldn't, I couldn't argue with the results. The tree overbore what it should bear. Our pear trees this year, we have done nothing to these pears. They're sitting out there planted next to my chicken pen over there. The roots, I'm sure, grow under into the chicken pen. We don't fertilize them. We just mow and blow the grass all up under them. And guys, I, we have canned, I don't even know how many hundred jars I, 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 we've canned. And we have given away five gallon bucket on top of five gallon buckets to people to can for themselves and the trees are still loaded. It works, guys. It works. So guys, I hope today that this video will have helped you some to understand the connection between the human body and the plants in the garden and the fact that if that plant's not healthy, we're not going to be healthy. I tried to tie those two connections together today as best as I could. And guys, I hope it's been a blessing to you. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.